captain's log supplementary thought addendum to the game Holy War. I'd like to make two points in this addendum. One is that one is on uh, the subject of the game as subject and the other is on game design and it's to do with the subject and the method of design. So as to the first point, um, I said it in the first video, the main video for the game coverage, that it's not about um, Holy War in uh, uh, as, as exemplified today between, uh, for example, ISIS and, and the West and so forth. Um, or is it? And that's the point because, and um, this leads to the second point as well, it, uh, it is titled Holy War and it, although it's a micro game it takes a massive, it doesn't sort of deal with a micro subject, it deals, and it, interestingly it doesn't just deal with two factions um, fighting each other for different ideals or ideologies, say the, the, the East and the West, but it puts that in the broader picture as well, so it, which sort of set the context of the ideologies. So you have the sun throwers who are essentially atheistic and uh, uh, aim to get rid of the idea of God completely and just carry on with their own existence in this um, mechanistic universe, a, you know, a non-living universe. Um, uh, and then there's the uh, the believers who who believe in the God of the universe, and uh, their solution to uh, the current crisis is to um, uh, send emissaries to the God and ask for um, absolution and salvation. And so we do actually see uh, the current conflict in a broad scope there, which I see as at root a conflict between East and West, between uh, human nature of either trying get to get back to nature or origin, um, which in this case is uh, viewed as completely spiritual, um, or to go forward um, uh, as we are uh, sort of divorced from a spiritual source and uh, take it from there. Um, and uh, it's interesting to take a step back from the current present conflicts and uh, see the world in the in those perspectives because um, it can help you to understand the other side more and to understand what they've got that we haven't and vice versa so for example ISIS do have a point in that our culture if we take it broadly speaking even if say 45% of Americans believe in God essentially they're their god is the dollar and um, earthly happiness and they may want heaven on earth or you know if it all falls to pieces to end up with god at the end but day to day um, their energies are in into um, machines and technology and so forth and they've got it and they perpetuate it at us in the west and on the other hand you've got the other the east just broadly speaking of course but you know personified in particular individuals and organizations um, for example, uh, Islamic uh, so-called fundamentalist extreme to you, it says no, it's all all thanks to Allah and it's to Allah we must go back and this is all a, an abomination um, and a mistake if in a way. Um, and those two forces pit against each other and you can see what, what each have is that the West I think we have the point that, that no we can't go back to God or, or being you know one to God, you can't go back to the breast and, and the womb and uh, it is better than us and because it, it made this whole world and so forth but um, you can't go back, we have to go forward from where we are and I think there's an unexplored spiritual dimension in the West that goes beyond the sort of registered Christianity um, that can develop a spirituality out of the kind of materiality that we are in. And then you look at the East and ISIS and so forth and say well you do have a point because we are God forsaken and we and um, culture, uh, culture I mean yeah culture in a way but you know technology uh, materialism has outstripped us morally we are kind of uh, as slaves to the machine, I don't blame you for not wanting that. I'm not saying that you have the right answer, but you have a point. And uh, if we can put both our points together, then um, 
that I think can be the only way forward. So this game, Holy War, interests uh, raises an um, interesting point about the Holy War today, and so in a sense it does simulate that, but on a uh, a profounder level than than the sort of tactical and strategic um, temporary objectives in this temporal realm. And then now to go on to move to the design point, and the design point is interesting linked to this because it is that um, a simulation as story. So often we think of war games and so forth as simulations or at least abstractions of reality. And uh, so an attempt to create a scheme or a simulacrum of reality that kind of works similar and recognisably to reality within which we can explore, see any parallels to um, the Western way? Explore what reality is. Um, or, so we think of like an abstraction, so we say reality we can never get that, so we, we sort of strip most of it away and get some kind of mechanics and procedures and then we make something, a game, a thing out of that. Or, more like in this case of this game, we take, we take a story and this is, this is the only way that I enjoy fiction and we see that it's actually talking about reality but from an unreal perspective, if you see what I mean. You might call it a spiritual perspective in the sense that it's not material. So, you know, if you can call anything not material, spiritual, let's do that and just say it's an imaginary um, perspective. It's unreal, it has its, but it, ha it is real because it is talking about the real world in a way that, and you know, it makes sense to us. So it's obviously not nonsensical. And, uh, can that be a method of design? So instead of thinking I'm abstracting um, this situation and building a war game from a few isolated or abstracted elements that I have to glue together, can we look at, is it possible to make take a design say, and I guess some, a lot, it's all, this will be intertwined in a lot of what designers do and some maybe more than most. I'm thinking maybe like Martin Wallace, you take it as a story, a, you make a parable of the situation, so not an abstraction but a parable, a picture, a story of the situation, and then you make um, the, the game a design out of that story. So it would be interesting, can we combine, um, I can't remember the exact name of the game, but remember there's that card game called storytelling or fairy tale the game and you play cards and tell a story via that can we make a war game a simulation of reality an economic game a political game by combining um, that idea of the fairy tale the parable looking at reality as a parable rather than an abstraction so we're inventing reality that is a deeper, profounder part of the the kind of the material or, or the um, immediate reality that we have. I, I'm sort of rambling a bit here. I hope I think you can kind of see where I'm going, but I haven't. It, I need to start designing a game to see where that works and to sort of explicate it a bit more. But anyway, I just wanted to record this thought and uh, put it out there. Uh, bye for now. Over and out.